What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to never run out of RAM in Python again. This can be particularly useful if you don't have a lot of RAM, but also if you're working with very large data sets. However, there is a downside that we're going to have to consider here. If you get value out of this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to make more free content like this possible in the future. But now, let us get right into it. Alright, so we're going to structure this video in three sections. The first one is going to be about using more RAM than we have available on our system. So how can we go beyond the 16, 32, 64 gigabytes of RAM that we have in our system? How can we use more than that, which can be very useful when working with large data sets in Python, for example. The second section will be about limiting RAM usage. So even if we have enough RAM to load a data frame uh, into the RAM, how can we limit that? How can we say I don't want to allow uh, this process to use more than 16 gigabytes of RAM, even though maybe I have 128 gigabytes of RAM, there might be reasons for that. And we're also going to learn how to combine this with the first trick to actually use the RAM, but use it in a different way. We're going to talk about that in a second. And in the third section, I want to do an experiment uh, to show you the downside of the approach to see that it's actually quite slow what we're doing. It still works, but there are things that you need to consider. So this is what we're going to do today. And we're going to start with a very simple file here for demonstration purposes. I have a simple Python script main py. And what we do here is extremely simple. We have an empty list. We go through a full loop 5000 times and we extend this list by 1 million elements with each iteration. So the list is empty, we go to zero, we have a million zeros that we add to the list, a million ones that we add to the list, a million twos and so on 5000 times. And what happens with this script, of course, is it uses up a lot of RAM. So on Linux, you have a command called free. If I run free dash H, I can see how much RAM is available on my system. Maybe let's zoom out a little bit here. Uh, you can see that currently I have 32, 31 gigabytes of RAM here. Uh, 2.9 gigabytes are used. I have 18 free and I have 25 available. And then I also have the so-called swap. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the swap is, in a nutshell, it's like RAM, but it uses the disk. So it's not fast. It's not uh, random access memory. It's disk memory, but it's used as RAM. So when you don't have enough RAM, what the system does is it outsources the job of the RAM onto the disk. It uses the swap file or however many swap files you have. It uses the swap memory to simulate RAM by using the disk, but the disk is much slower than the RAM, which is basically now spoiling already the approach that we're going to use, we're going to increase the amount of RAM that we're able to use by increasing the amount of swap that we have. What we're going to do now is we're going to combine this with a watch command, I'm going to say watch n1, which basically is going to update this every second. And I'm going to run free dash h here. Uh, so that you can see what's happening. So this is going to update all the time. As you can see here, the seconds are updating as well. And what we're going to do now is we're going to run main.py. Now I don't want to let this crash my system. But what you see is it's going to allocate a bunch of memory at some point, there's not going to be any memory left, I'm going to terminate this. The only reason I'm terminating this is because I'm recording, I don't want the recording to crash because of RAM limits. But what's going to happen is the moment you actually uh, or actually, maybe I'm going to run this here in a second. But what's going to happen is when this goes full, when when we don't have any memory left, what's going to happen is it's going to use the swap. So actually, let me try this, I'm going to save the recording, and I'm going to try this and hope my recording doesn't crash. All right, recording saved. So let's go ahead and say Python three main py. And hopefully you're going to see that this is filled up. And then it's going to start using swap. Hopefully it's going to have enough for my OBS to keep running. But you can see we already don't have a lot of free or available RAM, we're going to zero. And we're almost at zero. Now you can see swap is being used. So if the recording is still working, that is fine. But you can see now the swap is being used. And at some point, the swap is also going to be full. And then we have a problem, because then our uh, application cannot continue, we don't have enough memory to load the data frame. Uh, in this case, we're just creating an artificial list, we're going to look at an example with an actual data frame in the end. But that's the basic principle. The trick I want to show you today is how you can increase this swap memory, at least in the first section here, how we can increase that swap memory to uh, make it possible to load larger data frames. And on Linux, you can do that with a command called f allocate. So we're going to say sudo f allocate. 
and we're going to say dash L and then the size of the swap that we want to or the amount of swap space that we want to reserve. So I'm going to say 20 gigabytes here, meaning it's going to add to the 19 gigabytes, it's going to be 39 in the end. And uh, I'm going to define that this shall happen in a swap file, which I'm going to call swap file temp in the root directory. So slash swap file temp, this is going to create it, I'm going to enter my password here. Um, and then I need to do a couple of things. First of all, I need to set the proper permission. So I'm going to say sudo change mode 600 onto the swap file. Then I'm going to actually make it a swap file with the header. So I'm going to say sudo uh, make swap. And then I'm going to say swap file temp. And then finally, I'm going to say, and now you're going to see the change here in a second, sudo swap on swap file temp. So now you can see I have 39 gigabytes and uh, I can run the script again. If I run the script, you're going to see that now it can go beyond the 19 gigabytes that we had in the beginning. So it's going to allocate here the memory again, then it's going to be um, to get to the limit here, it's going to start allocating swap. And the limit now is 39 gigabytes, not 19 gigabytes as before. But I'm not going to run this now until the end. The important thing is you can increase the amount of swap and kind of RAM that you have available. It's not really RAM, it's kind of slow, but you can increase that amount if you have disk space available. And if you don't need it anymore, you can just go ahead and say sudo swap off swap file temp. And then you can say sudo rm swap file temp. And that's it. You only have 19 gigabytes now if that was your default before. Now, one interesting thing is sometimes you don't necessarily want to create more swap, you just want to use the swap earlier, because 19 gigabytes is already kind of fine. But maybe you want to start using these 19 gigabytes before you run out of the 31 gigabytes here that I have in my RAM. How can I do that? Now, one thing that doesn't really work for me is to adjust the swappiness. So there is a certain thing called swappiness, which basically tells your kernel how aggressively it should use the swap. So uh, I think it's sudo sys ctl and then vm dot swappiness. And in my case, it's 180. I think the default on, on most systems, it's a value between zero and 100, where zero means don't use the swap at all. And 100 means use it as soon as possible. And I think on pop OS, I'm not sure if this is unique to pop OS, I think it's a value between zero and 200, where 100 is neutral, zero is don't use it and 200 is use it as aggressively as possible. Um, however, no matter what I do with this value, it doesn't seem to really change stuff, uh, you can theoretically change it by just saying equals to something like 200, for example. Um, but it doesn't seem to do a lot in my system, it doesn't really change how early the swap is being used. It's more like an advice to the kernel, but it doesn't really have to follow it. So if you actually want to force uh, your process to only use a certain amount of RAM before it goes to the swap, you can do that with C groups. This is now section two of the video, I want to show you how you can say my Python process is allowed to use 10 gigabytes of RAM, for example, or five gigabytes of RAM before going to the swap and using swap instead of my RAM, which is valuable. So we can do that using C groups for that on Linux, at least on Ubuntu based distributions or Debian based distributions, you want to say sudo apt install C group dash tools. Uh, I think there's probably some equivalent on uh, Mac and Windows. So you say sudo apt install C group tools. And this is going to install the utility itself. And then what you want to do is you want to create a new group. So you want to say sudo make directory sys fs, then C group, and then you want to call this whatever you want to call this. So my tutorial group, for example, this is now a directory, I can now say that um, in this directory, I want to write to the file that defines how much memory I can use and how much swab I can use, I want to enter a value there, I want to put a value there. So I can do that with the T command line tool TEE, -E, like this, you can also use TLDR to see what it does, basically takes uh, in uh, input from or information from standard input, and writes it to standard output or to files. And what we're going to do now is we're going to say echo, and then how many gigabytes of RAM do I want to allow, let's keep it uh, small. And let's say, uh, just two gigabytes of RAM before we use the swap. And I'm going to say echo to G, then I'm going to use a pipe symbol. And then I'm going to say sudo T, and then the path sys fs c group, then my tutorial group, and then the file is memory 
dot max. So when I run this, this group now is going to only be allowed to use two gigabytes of RAM um, in general. Now, if I also for some reason want to limit the swap, so to limit the memory usage entirely, I can also write something into the file. Uh, let's go with something like five gigabytes uh, into the file memory dot swap dot max. So this also says not only is the RAM usage limited, you have two gigabytes of RAM, you have five gigabytes of swap. And if you run out of that, you're basically, yeah, you basically don't get any more resources. So this is now a group, if I want to attach something to that group, I need to write the process ID into the file called cgroup.prox. So there is a file um, in sys fs cgroup my tutorial group cgroup dot uh, processes so prox like this. And here we can write uh, process IDs. So I can put a process ID here. And this is going to attach that process to that group, which means that now this process with that ID is going to be limited in terms of RAM and swap. If I want to do that with a current command line, I can just say echo dollar dollar, this is going to give me the process ID of the current shell. And I can write that using again, sudo t into this processes list. So this is my process ID. Now this is the process ID of my uh, shell, I can run this separately again. If you want to see that this is going to just give give me that and now I wrote this into the processes. And this shell now and everything I run from this shell is going to have this limitation. So if I run my Python script, again, if I say Python three main.py, you're going to see it starts allocating RAM, it already uh, got to the two gigabytes limit, now it's going to allocate swap. And uh, then it's going to probably crash, there you go, it was killed because it exceeded the amount of resources. Uh, it was allowed to use. And if I go up here now, and I change this to uh, six gigabyte, this is going to um, allow me to use six gigabytes, as you can see, I allocate a little bit more, then I use the swap, then I'm going to run, run out of memory again, and it's going to be killed. That's the basic idea here. So this can be useful. First of all, if you want to limit the resources entirely, like we're doing right now, or if you just want to force it to use the swap earlier. So maybe you have uh, a limited amount of RAM, you don't really want to or you cannot really invest money or anything, which is uh, probably not the case because RAM is quite cheap. So it's always a better idea to just buy more RAM, but maybe you just can't for some reason, or you don't want to for some reason. And time is not really an issue, you can wait like 10 x the time doesn't really matter, then you might want to force to use the swap earlier. And uh, this is a way to do that. Now, the important thing is, how do I get rid of all that? How do I reverse everything? Uh, you basically can write a simple uh, shell script here, you can say for and then uh, PID in dollar cat and then the file again. So system FS C group, my tutorial group, uh, C group dot prox. And then that is going to be followed by a semicolon do. And what we want to do here is we want to say echo PID and then sudo t and we want to add this to a different group. So we're going to add this to the default group, which is cgroup.prox in C group. And then we're going to say done. And uh, we can run this again, nothing's going to happen. There you go. And then we're going to remove the directory sudo rm there sys fs c group, uh, my tutorial group, and that's it. Now if I run this again, now, if I run my Python code, again, it's going to just allocate again, all of the RAM, and then it's going to go to the swap. So there's no limitation anymore, as you can see. All right, so that's the basic principle, you can increase the amount of swap temporarily or permanently, you can force your system to use swap earlier. But now we want to see what happens actually, when we do that, how much slower is our, um, or our our operations when we do that. So I have in this directory here, a yellow train data CSV taxi data set. And I have a file called experiment py where I have time and pandas imported, I load this data set, it has around two gigabytes on disk. So it has more, uh, I think it's around seven gigabytes of data when you have it in RAM or seven point something. Uh, what we do is we load it, we print it, we track the time it takes to uh, turn two fields into date times, then to calculate the trip duration, and then to get the median trip duration. So this is just some calculations being done here, we measure the time it takes to do that. 
uh, and then we print the result. Now, doing this entirely in swap is going to be super, super slow. So we're not going to do that. But we want to compare what happens when we just run this uh, like this. So if I just say experiment py, how long does it take? You can see it allocates uh, space. So 3.4, 3.5, 3.7, uh, probably around seven gigabytes of data. Maybe I can open up a BTOP here. Uh, two smalls. Okay, I just got rid of the uh, other view of the free and uh, watch command. And you can see now we have BTOP, we can see that certain processes are running. Now this process is already done. But you can see we have 8.8 .8 seconds that it takes to do all of that. And uh, I can run this again, we can see how much memory is actually allocated. This is our process Python three, this is the memory usage, we can see 1.1 gigabyte 1.3 gigabytes and so on. And at some point, it's gonna get to the maximum. And we're going to then see how much longer it takes if we outsource a portion of the data. Uh, 7.2 gigabytes was the limit, I think. So this was 7.2 gigabytes roughly to load this data frame into Python to uh, work with it. And it takes around eight to nine seconds, let's say nine seconds to process uh, the data the way we want it to. Now, let's say I want to use a certain amount of swaps. So let's go ahead and do the same thing that we did before with the C groups, we're going to say sudo make directory, sys fs C group, my tutorial group, we're going to create it again. And then we're going to just let me clear this, uh, we're going to just say echo. And let's say six gigabytes of RAM is fine, we're going to allow for that sudo t into sys fs c group my tutorial group memory dot max. We're not going to limit the swap usage. Actually, let me run the command down here watch minus n one free dash h. Maybe we can zoom in a little bit here. Okay, that's not a very good overview. Let's do it. Uh, let's do it like this a little bit small, but hopefully you can somewhat read it. Um, and now we're going to say attach this again to the group. So sudo t sys fs c group, my tutorial group, and then c group processes. That should work. Now we have the limitation. And now let's go ahead and try to run the same script and see how much longer it takes. Now we're not actually measuring how long it takes to uh, to load the data frame and to to display it, we're only tracking the time for the operation. But both is going to probably take quite some time. So you can see now the RAM is being used, we have three gigabytes, that's not our limit yet. We have five, 5.9. And now we get to the limit, we cannot go to the 7.2 as before. Right now, we would have been done already if we had no limitations. But now it has to use the swap. As you can see, it starts using the swap, everything is slower, much slower, I would say, uh, not in a way that's unacceptable. So we have the data frame loaded now, and it's going to take longer. But it's not like it's completely unacceptable. But you also need to consider we're only loading a small portion of the data into the swap. It's not like we're loading the entire data frame into the swap, that would be much, much slower, depending, of course, also on your hard drive. But even just having a small portion, uh, like 1.2 gigabytes or something, or I don't know how much we allocate it now into swap. But even just having a small portion of that in the swap is going to massively slow it down, we get 28.91 seconds. So this is something to be, uh, yeah, enjoyed, or, or taken to, to be taken with a grain of salt, let's say, because it is a trick or strategy that you can use to increase the amount of memory that you have when you're loading data frames when you're working with them. So you can go beyond the RAM amount that you have, you can also start using the swap earlier, but it is slower, and you need to be aware of that. So if we're talking about, uh, you know, needing to wait five hours instead of five minutes, and you can do that because you don't really care and you don't want to buy a lot of RAM, you can do that. But keep in mind that this is a pretty nice trick, but it will slow you down. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Recently, I changed the style of my videos a little bit, I hopefully increased the quality a little bit. So if you enjoy this new format or this new style of videos with a new upload schedule, please let me know by subscribing, hitting the notification bell, liking the video, commenting and all the good stuff. And besides that, I'm going to see you in the next video.